This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. Feisty, fearless, and fair. She's an Emmy-winning journalist from the White House to war zones, telling all sides of the story. This is The Rita Cosby Show. Only Rita, meet a maid, nothing can come between us. When it gets dark, I tow your heart away. Breaking news. And tonight on The Rita Cosby Show, President Trump says no moss. There will be no more debates with him and Kamala Harris. He says, listen, I've already done two. I did one with some guy named Joe Biden, who allegedly is the president in the White House, even though he seems to be at the beach a lot. And I did the one with Kamala Harris. And boy, was the deck stacked against him there. There's some big news, by the way, tonight. Uh, because there are several interesting individuals saying it is time for an investigation of ABC. Some people wondering, did they maybe get some questions fed to the Kamala Harris team beforehand? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. If that happened, that would be devastating to ABC television and boy, uh, maybe it would make sense why she seemed to have the answers, even though they had no substance. And also lots of questions tonight about the fairness of the moderators. We know that Lindsay Davis, who was next to David Muir on ABC television during the debate, she apparently is sorority sisters with Kamala Harris. And also, we know that Kamala Harris and her husband are very good friends with one of the top executives at ABC television. It's almost like Judge Marshawn, you know, in the New York case where like the daughter was getting money from the Kamala Harris team and from all these other Democrats. And yet Judge Marshawn kept staying on the case. You're like, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. That seems like a conflict of interest. And then also... Judge Marshawn himself donated to the Biden campaign. I would say that's a conflict of interest. And yet he stayed on the case and the sentencing will take place sometime in November at the end of November. So in the middle of all this, you got to also wonder about the quality and the integrity of ABC television, because boy, oh boy, was that an ambush, ambush debate. That was terrible. We're going to talk a lot about that tonight. Also, we have a real treat. The great Bill O'Reilly is going to be joining us tonight. He's going to be with us in just about a half an hour. He has his brand new book out, Confronting the Presidents, talking about his great no-spin assessments from George Washington to Joe Biden and beyond. So I can't wait to get his take on the debate. I can't wait to get his take on the historical perspective of where we are right now in the presidential race and looking back at history, who Kamala Harris most resembles, and also what is the road ahead. So make sure you stay tuned for that. The great Bill O'Reilly joining us in just about 20, 25 minutes or so from now. You definitely do not want to miss that. In the meantime, we're talking about the fact that President Trump is saying there will be no more debates. He is saying, and he put some of this on his truth social, too, to his millions upon millions of followers, that Kamala Harris, as we know, was a no-show to the Fox debate. Remember, she didn't show up. They didn't expect her to because she wasn't, you know, she wasn't suggesting it. They were hoping she would. They threw it out there. Originally, they were talking about a Fox debate then an ABC debate, and then an NBC debate. Well, now Kamala Harris has turned down. She was a no-show at the Fox debate, and Trump's team is saying on the NBC and CBS she's not agreeing to that. 
So he's like, forget it. I'm not going to bend over backwards and acquiesce to this opponent who clearly uh, got very curried favored treatment during the debate. That's the nicest thing I could say. And it might be a lot worse. So we're looking into all of that. In the meantime, here is President Trump just a little bit ago in Arizona, where he's out on the campaign trail today. Kamala Harris is in North Carolina. And in Arizona, this is what he had to say about no moss on the debates. Because we've done two debates and because they were successful, there will be no third debate. too late anyway the voting's already begun you got to go out and vote we got to vote we're going to this is going to be the most important vote in the history of our country it'll be the most important no more debates is that the right move well here is kamala harris as i mentioned she's in north carolina and she is chiming for another debate it's interesting because A lot of people who saw the debate with Trump and Kamala, his second opponent in this race, remember there was a guy named Joe Biden and then they did the old switcheroo. Well, Kamala, in this case, she's saying, I want another debate, which makes you wonder, is she seeing what the Trump team is seeing? The Trump team is seeing, and we talked earlier today with John McLaughlin, who is the great Trump pollster. And he was talking about some of the internal polls that have come out within the campaign and also the public ones. The public ones are showing a very, uh, very, if anything, slight little increment for Kamala Harris or no increment at all. And yet their internal polls, according to John McLaughlin and others, they say are actually showing that Trump got a bump, especially from independents. Because independents went into that debate and they wanted meat on the bone. They wanted substance on the bone. They wanted someone who could answer a simple question like, uh, why did you suggest defunding police? Why did you suggest defunding ICE? Why did you call ICE KKK? Why were you trying to bail out the rioters in the summer of 2020? They're not trick questions. And yet she did a circle back sake, remember, Kamala Harris, and didn't answer any of those questions and got away with it because the moderators were too busy going after President Trump. She was like an ancillary figure in the debate. So it makes you wonder, is the reason she wants another debate? Because if she thinks she really won, like she's going out there telling everybody, and if she thinks like she's got this election all sewn up, she would not want another debate. She would just say, forget it. Let's just leave it at that. But she is clearly seeing Maybe some of the same things that his internal polls are seeing, that she was very thin on substance. Maybe one points on style and performance and low expectations. She came through, uh, even though she didn't say a lot. There's an art to talking for two minutes and not saying a lot. So she did that. She gets the award for that. And maybe people thought, okay, well, it wasn't as bad, but she didn't really say anything. So clearly, that is probably the feedback that she's getting, because otherwise, why the heck would you want another debate? So is it the right move that Trump is now saying he doesn't want a debate? Is he trying to bait her? Is there some game behind this, hoping he can push her into the Fox debate, saying, look, you know, I was ready. You were a no-show. You know, is he planning on doing that? Or, hey, let's start tomorrow and do it with Fox. Fox would do it in a heartbeat tomorrow. Maybe he's going to try to say, next time it has to be a little bit more fair, moderators, because last time was, boy, oh boy, the the gig was up. It was pretty obvious what was going on. You know, it was pretty obvious that the deck was stacked intentionally against him. So here is Kamala saying, nope, let's go back in the ring like Tyson and Evander Holyfield. I believe we owe it to have another debate. We owe it to the voters. I want to win. I'm ready to do whatever I can. I swear. I swear. So Tulsi Gabbard, who has been training President Trump, spoke tonight 
And when she found out that Donald Trump has said, no, we're not going to do another debate. I mean, Trump has a point. The fact he did one. And again, the old royal switcheroo, like I talked about. Then they put in Kamala Harris. What, does he have another opponent for the third one? Is that the way this works? And here is Tulsi Gabbard saying that she can sympathize with why Trump doesn't want to go back in the ring. And she feels he doesn't need to. President Trump went eight where it was three versus one. It was completely biased. It was the propaganda media that's in the pocket of Kamala Harris and the Democrat elite going up against Donald Trump. It is political theater that they want to use as a means to spread their propaganda. And uh, why, why would he? Why would he walk into that again? I think if he were to do any kind of debate, it would have to be a com- he would have to be guaranteed a completely neutral setting. But but the thing is, none of these propaganda media uh, who like to call themselves journalists when they're not, they can't be trusted. And ABC just proved that point. So uh, I, I don't I don't disagree with his decision. I can see why he doesn't uh, why he doesn't want a redo of, of that ambush and attack. Yeah, you can understand it, guys. Let's go to Al in Yonkers, 1-800-848-9222. Al, uh, what do you make of Trump saying, that's it, no more? Yeah, hi, Rita. Thanks for taking my call. You know, it's a judgment call. Uh, I don't blame the president. Uh, It's post-Labor Day. He has to reach the uh, states where he needs to win the Electoral College of 270. You know the states, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Michigan, Georgia, so on. Uh, He has to win and he has to solidify his base in states like Georgia, where there's uh, there's a large African-American vote, which will come out for Harris. He has to solidify that vote in uh, Georgia, in North Carolina. So he has a lot of legwork to do. And I, I don't blame him. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. I would normally say, hey, go back out again, because I think he could have done things differently, could have done yes. some things better in, in responses. On the other hand, I also felt it was such an ambush against him. I mean, it was so I, I've seen, you know, biased debates, but this one takes the record book and it was just abysmal. And so if he feels like he's going back into the same scenario, I don't blame him. Why should he go back in? I mean, you know, it's her turn to go into anything like that uh, or at least level the playing field. If you put him on a level playing field, uh, I think it would have been a whole different debate. But I think he was kind of stunned how just how blatantly out to get him the moderators were and how blatantly easy they were on Kamala Harris. So if he feels like it's the same equation, I don't blame him if he feels like it's part two. It's like, uh, you know, somebody, uh, you know, says, you know, Mike Tyson punches you in the head. Uh, I don't know too many people who'd say, hey, let me go back in the ring and go for another. You know, that's right. That's right. And uh, I think the president realizes, you know, like the last time in 2016, uh, his path to victory is the Electoral College. We don't have to worry about the popular vote. Uh, Our constitution is based on the 270, and that's what the president needs to do to get on, uh, get back into the White House. Yeah, absolutely. And and the more I see of the spin on her end and the uh, the show on her end, uh, that's a scary thing for America. I mean, we still how weird is it? We have somebody now running for president uh, who has not gotten a single vote in a primary. Um, they cast aside the 14 million that Joe Biden got in this primary. Um, and, and now we still don't even know what their vote, their policies are, their views are. Uh, she has apparently copy pasted her team from Joe Biden's website and put it on her website. I mean, that's a pretty amazing thing. Um, we need to hear more substance from her. I'd like to see her taking a whole bunch. I'd like to see her uh, doing a whole bunch of very hard one-on-one interviews because that's what re- that's what basically the debate was. It was basically a one-on-one interview of Trump, and then this other person to the right happened to be Kamala Harris. So that's what actually should happen because you don't want to give anything where she could distract. If you do a, a press conference, she's only going to call upon like the favorable reporters. You don't want that. It should be open and free for all. And it should be with some very tough, hard hitting journalists. Uh, why don't we do two of them at the same time and then bring in somebody else and have Trump ask her questions? Let's see how she feels, because that's basically what happened at the ABC TV debate. Al, thank you. We're going to continue your calls, everybody. 1-800-848-9222. And you're listening to The Rita Cosby Show. The Rita Cosby Show. 
This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. When you want to have fun and have scratchers to scratch, there's a playful way you can do just that. Scratch with the key or acrylic nail. Scratch with the quill from a porcupine tail. Use a belt buckle from your friend Lamar. Or scratch with your pick while you play guitar. You can scratch in a bunch of different playful ways. Scratchers from the California Lottery. A little play can make your day. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase player claim. ABC Wednesday. It's the premiere everyone is talking about. I'm Joan, and I'm your first Golden Bachelorette. Loves getting a second, second chance. When you're 61 years old, you have very few opportunities to change your life. I have to be ready. The Golden Bachelorette is proving romance never ages. I represent millions of people in their golden years looking for love. The Golden Bachelorette. I am ready to find the next great love of my life. Series premiere Wednesday on ABC and stream on Hulu. Ready to ring in the new semester? Pink's got A-plus styles for heading back to campus. Made for early morning classes, midday coffee runs, and late night study sessions. Their latest looks are everything you need to pass with flying colors. We're talking tanks that go with literally every fit. Parachute pants with a throwback 90s vibe. Plus cute sweaters, activewear, and so much more. Shop now at pink.com or get 15% off in pink stores with a valid student ID. Exclusions apply. It's the Rita Cosby Show. And the great Bill O'Reilly is going to be joining us here on the show in about seven, eight minutes, talking about his amazing book on the presidents and giving us some great perspective on the debate. And where the race goes from here. You definitely don't want to miss it. Bill O'Reilly coming up in about seven, eight minutes here on The Rita Cosby Show. 1-800-848-9222. Let's go to Tony in Clifton. Tony, your thoughts about uh, Trump saying no more debates? Hi, Rita Cosby. I agree with President Trump, and I'll tell you why. We have a lot of questions, obviously, about this debate. And a lot of the questions are based on what we're saying. It's not based on what we're thinking, but it's based on what we saw. This debate was not a presidential debate, and the structure was set up tag team style, like in wrestling, okay? So that means that so that David Muir, Lindsey Davis, and Kamala Harris were working on a team, and that team was debating with Donald Trump. That is breaking. That's clearly not a legitimate a way to conduct a debate. They many times um, second seconded, like instead of her doing a one, two, whatever she said didn't make any sense, they would help her with it. It's clear because if you read the commentary, many times she didn't even answer ask the question and she didn't answer the question. So David Muir would either bring up another point to help her along to sort of put a little wood on the fire with Trump and as well as Lindsey Davis, who continually cut off President Trump. So the style of the debate was set up like a celebrity, celebrity debate tag team show. That you know, you know what, actually, ABC. I like the tag team um, idea. Um, I would have I would put probably David Muir at the top of that because I just thought he was the worst. Um, and, you know, it's interesting I, I looked at it, and this is sad, uh, you know, I almost thought, Tony, it was like a parody, like, like it almost looked like an SNL script, you know, like, you know, like, a, like an SNL, like, like a joke that like everybody piling on this one person and the other one, uh, you know, going easy and going, what do you mean? There's no bias here. Oh, we love you, come on. You're the worst to Trump, you know? I mean, it's almost like, like you just could have replaced it and put, you know, Saturday Night Live, special show, and you go, God, that's hilarious. 
the sad thing is it's not hilarious at the end of the day because, boy, did they do an enormous disservice to the American public. I mean, the sad thing is I'm not surprised that a lot of independents, according to multiple polls, are still trying to find out what does Kamala Harris stand for? Because they certainly didn't learn about that in the debate. She spent 90 minutes with a bunch of gobbledygook, and I think we know less about her than we did before. And that's really sad for America. Rita Cosby is on. The Rita Cosby Show presents Back the Blue. And this Back the Blue segment is sponsored by GoyaCares.com because you are a precious gift from God. Be sure to check out GoyaCares.com. And this very powerful story from Dunn County, Wisconsin, where a Western Wisconsin family is alive thanks to the local police chief who happened to be nearby and kicked in a door to save them from a fire in their burning home. Uh, The fire chief in the area said one person was sleeping when the fire started. The other person was in the basement. So they did not hear the smoke detectors going off. Fortunate enough that a village employee noticed. Then also the village police chief suddenly came to the door, knocked down the doors, actually kicked them in to alert the people. And if it wasn't for him, they would not be alive. A neighbor said that they were stunned. They said suddenly the police chief came. Thank God he was on duty and in the area. Had he not been in duty, I'm sure it would have been a different outcome. I was about to go and get a wet towel so he could put it on his face. He didn't have anything to help him breathe from the smoke. He just knocked down the door, ran in, and suddenly the two people got out. Both of them are said to be doing okay. Also, the chief himself and everybody in the town calling him a real hero. And I love sharing these stories because it honors our great men and women in blue every night who do so many incredible things for all of us. And speaking of incredible, our next guest here on the Rita Cosby Show is a mega best-selling author. He has authored uh, an incredible 18 number one ranked nonfiction books, including, of course, the historical Killing series, uh, which is the best-selling nonfiction series of all time with 19 million books in print. He also hosts the awesome Common Sense with Bill O'Reilly every night, 9 to 10 p.m. on WABC Radio. And he has another big blockbuster book that just came out appropriately on his birthday, which I love. And the book is called Confronting the Presidents, No Spin Assessments from Washington to Biden. And the great Bill O'Reilly joins us now here on the show. Uh, Bill, I can't think of a more timely and important time. Um, and before we get to your book, just real quickly, your assessment of the fact that now Trump is saying, no, I'm not going to do it. Um, and, you know, look, uh, Tulsi Gabbard came out tonight. I don't know if you heard. And she said, why should he do it unless it was a fair location? Uh, otherwise, it's like a round two of just getting punched in the face. Your thoughts? I think Trump will do another debate. Um, it depends on how the polls shake in the next week or two. Uh, this reminds me of 1984 when Ronald Reagan got waxed in the first debate by Walter Mondale and the whole Republican establishment was melting down. And Reagan did a second debate and he uh, obliterated Mondale and won in the last slide. I don't see what the downside is for Donald Trump to do another debate. He'd have to be better than the first one, right? Right. I mean, as long as he stays away from dogs and cats, I, I mean, you know, concentrates on, uh, as we talked about earlier on Cats and Cosby, um, the serious issues of the day in, in a very fact-based way, he can easily beat her in a debate because because she doesn't have anything. She's got right. no solutions to any problems. I mean, a woman is just blathering out there. And, you know, people who say, well, Kamala Harris won the debate. What does that mean? And she didn't answer any questions. Um, maybe she helped herself more than Trump did. That's probably true. 
because Donald Trump allowed himself to be baited and put on the defensive for the entire 90 minutes. And he didn't have to do that. Um, so anyway, if I were Trump, I would certainly debate her anytime, any place, um, because Trump's got the stronger record. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, and before I want to get into some of the aspects of your book, you have such a great perspective. What I love about you, Bill, and I've had the honor of knowing you for so many years when we worked together at Fox News, and you are also really a historian. Um, you love the history. You love the details. You always uncover these neat details. Um, and one of the things, just to equate it to modern times now, also with Kamala, since we're talking about her, uh, you equate her to Warren Harding. Can you explain for our audience here why? Uh, because you did a lot of work and, and you investigated Warren Harding. Yeah, this is so bizarre. It really is so bizarre. So one of the worst presidents we've ever had is a Republican named Warren Harding who won the election in 1920. The man did not campaign. He never answered any questions. Nobody knew who the deuce he was. He's from Marion, Ohio. If you wanted to go ask him something, you had to go up to his front porch where he was in a rocking chair. So the guy um, basically said, hey, I don't even want to be president. And Kamala Harris does, of course. Um, and, you know, but I know that Woodrow Wilson and the Democrats are looked upon so poorly that all I'm going to do is stay in my house and I'll win. And it's exactly what happened. So the Harris campaign is doing close to that. They're not putting her out anywhere. You can't ask her any questions. In a debate forum and in the CNN, the one interview she did with Dana Bash, when you ask her a question, she dodges it. She doesn't answer it. And the interviewers and the moderators go, okay, that's fine. If it were me, Rita, you know what would happen. I ask you a question, you dodge. I say to the audience, yeah, you, you kind of dodge that. You want to try again? That kind of thing. So uh, I don't believe that uh, Kamala Harris or any of her campaigners even know who Warren Harding is. But here's the kicker of the story. Warren Harding was an abysmal president. Horrible. And he, all he did in the White House was play cards to three in the morning with his corrupt friends, get drunk, and chase his mistress around. That's, that was pretty much his day. So <laughs> if you vote for somebody and you don't know anything about him or her, watch out. You know, um, in your book, because uh, obviously it takes a while and, and everybody, you know, when you do a book, obviously there's a lot of pre-production. You take us from George Washington to Biden. How do you, what did you learn about President Biden and how do you think history is going to view him, Bill O'Reilly? Well, what we did with Biden was because we were writing the book during his third year and nobody knew that he was going to drop out. I don't know if he um, did either, by the way. <laughs> no, he, he, absolutely. He didn't know. I mean, he didn't want to leave. He, he and Jill were hanging on to the furniture. Right. You know? They had to. But I had I wrote an essay on Biden and Martin Dugard, my co-author. I, I thought the fair way to do it is I'll write my essay because I think Joe Biden's the second worst president in history. OK, and I'll back that up in my essay. And then Dugard. And I said, I don't even want to see your essay. We just, you would just throw it in. You write what you think about Biden. And he was much kinder to Biden. Marty lives in California. He's a middle, more left than I am. But I thought that was a fair way to do it. And we did the same thing with Trump. I wrote my essay on Trump. He wrote his essay on Trump. And because the historical uh, spectrum of both men is not complete. So I thought that was a fair way to do it. It's provocative. I mean, me calling Joe Biden the second worst president in history, I think I can back that up all day long. But that's the way we decided to do it, to be fair. Well, he might take that as a compliment because some people might call him the worst president in history. But so he might be wrong. Right, exactly. Be wrong. Now that we've because heard. James, right. Yeah, James, James Buchanan, the president before Lincoln, was a coward and allowed the South to arm itself to abuse federal officials. He wouldn't even reinforce federal garrisons at Fort Sumter. This Buchanan was far and away the most irresponsible president, and it was all due to cowardice. He was afraid. He didn't want to free the slaves. And when Abe Lincoln walked into that White House, 
The Civil War was a fait accompli. Nobody could stop it. And it was because of Buchanan's incompetence. You can't top that, Rita. More than a million Americans were killed in that conflict. It, it changed everybody's course. So I think I'm a pretty accurate reporter historian, and that's why the book sold 75,000 copies in two days. And thank you all. I, I can't thank everybody enough for the phenomenal success already. Well, I'm not surprised because you always have such great stuff and such. I, I, th- I always learn so much from your books. You know, what did you think of when Kamala Harris in the debate the other day said, oh, January 6th, uh, you know, is the worst uh, action against a threat to democracy since the Civil War, you know? Look, they can say anything they want. So Trump says Kamala Harris is dumb as a rock. She's not dumb as a rock. OK, uh, Kamala Harris says Trump is the greatest threat to it. Blah, 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 blah. OK, it's it's all hyperbole, and nonsense propaganda. I don't react to any of that. I'm like numb to it at this point. You know, it's when they start with that stuff. I just uh, pet my dog. You know, I just tune out. This is nonsense. Tell me something that you're going to do that makes sense to improve the lives of the American people. That's what I want to hear, Rita. Now, in four years, Trump did a pretty good job helping the American people. All right, real wages up 7%. Come on. Um, You know, COVID interrupted that, but 7% real wages up to working people? That's pretty damn good. Yeah, that is. In seven seven years, seven and a half years, Kamala has not done one thing, four years as a senator, three and a half as vice president, not one to improve the lives of the American people. So if you're a fair person at all, and you're comparing the two records, what conclusion do you come to? Well, and that's where that message needed to be hammered home. I agree. Uh, You know, because I do agree. It's very crystal clear. But, you know, if you look at history, Bill, and in your great new book, Confronting the Presidents, which president do you think did the most. I mean, you look at, obviously, we think of, you know, I know you talked about George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. I mean, there's, some, there's so many extraordinary, like, heroic figures. Was there, were there ones that you said, boy, they did the most to this country, if you could pick sort of the, the top three and why? Sorry, right, Lincoln, far and away, the best president. Washington, number two. Number three, you probably have to give to Franklin Roosevelt, although he made a lot of mistakes and he was a dubious character. Um, there's no doubt about it. But Roosevelt had to tackle the Great Depression and World War II. Outside of Lincoln, no president ever got handed that kind of a bad hand. And Roosevelt was elected four times. And he did a pretty good job of m- negotiating America through those horrible occurrences. So I'd have to go Lincoln one, Washington two. FDR, three, Teddy Roosevelt, four, and then it gets to be murky. Ronald Reagan was a good president. Uh, He brought back the country's power. He brought back confidence in the federal government. He did a lot of good things, Reagan. Um, He might be in that five, six, seven range. And then we got guys like James K. Polk. Nobody ever heard of him. Everybody thinks he's a rapper. You know, I tell you about him, <laughs> but he was a very good president. Well, how was he at rapping? Andrew Jackson, <laughs> you know, Andrew Jackson was a guy who's kind of crazy, but he, he did some really good things for the folks. So when you read, I don't rank them, by the way. I want the reader to rank the, the presidents. I tell you what, what good they did, what bad they did, and then you make up your mind about whether they helped to hurt the country. Now, you brought up Andrew Jackson and a character. Um, You always get these interesting nuggets, which is why I feel like you you bring these people to life for us. Um, What were some of the most surprising things from him and some of the others, some of the quirky things that you learned that maybe most of us don't know? Well, Andrew Jackson was a brawler. So, he you know, he didn't like what you said. He punched you. And and if you said something about his wife, he'd shoot you. So he was, was, (laughs) you know... Really a cantankerous, tough, um, backwoods guy. And his bio is just fascinating. Um, John Quincy Adams, every morning reader, got up, went on a walk to the Potomac River, about a mile and a half from the White House, 
took off his clothes and jumped in. And he swam naked in the Potomac every morning. And there were people going, isn't, isn't that the president there naked? Luckily, they didn't have iPhones then, Bill. Well, <laughs> one time, the current got so strong that it came up on the shore and wiped away his clothes. He had to, he had to walk home. He had no clothes on. Oh, my God. Adam. <laughs> That's a All great right? story. <laughs> I, I mean, we, every one of them I have great stories about. And, and, you know, people think we mythologize presidents. No. No, they're normal. Now, I, no, let me take that word back. They're not normal. They are just human beings. Even guys like Washington, who, you know, the father of our country, all of that. George Washington's mother hated him. Wrote letters saying to the Virginia newspapers, my son Georgie is starving me to death. And Washington got was furious. He was crazy. He didn't even go to his mother's funeral. Wow. I didn't know so, that. That's amazing. This, you know, this, this person who's like, you know, uh, uh, I mean, he's a, he's one of the great, obviously, figures in American history. And yet his mother didn't appreciate him. Not at all. And it was a backstory to it. And I say and I tell you the well, story of all of these people in confronting the presidents. But no one knows the stuff, which is why. um I'm the best-selling nonfiction author in the world because we come up with stuff that you don't know, and we make it fun to read the book. So you're learning and having fun. Whenever you can do that, you're going to be successful. Absolutely. That is a home run. Um, And before I let you go, Bill O'Reilly, by the way, I'm looking at the book right now. I just started it and I can't wait to finish it. I'm so excited, Bill, because, you know, I love history and I love you. Um, what about Trump? Who would you equate him to uh, of all the different? Is there is there anybody that you could uh, pair him with or, or see oh, yeah. traits of his? Trump's favorite president is Andrew Jackson. But believe me when I tell you, there's no comparison between Andy and Donnie. Trump was most like Teddy Roosevelt. Larger than life. Charisma all over the place. No censorship in what he's saying. Teddy was um, a unbelievably fascinating man. And I think Trump is a fascinating guy, whether you like him or not. I've known him 35 years. Yeah, I agree. You know, I love Trump. I agree. I, I don't love him. I mean, I know his downside. I, 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 I'm a friend of his, so, I, you know, if he needs anything from me, I certainly will give it to him. But Teddy Roosevelt and Donald Trump had a lot of similarities, the way they presented themselves to the folks, which is why the MAGA people, they'll, they'll walk through fire for Trump. And Teddy had the bull moose people would do the same thing for him. So that's the comparison. Wow. Well, Bill, I love you. I am so excited. I know this is going to be with 75,000 copies sold. Uh, this is another huge Mega, mega best seller. There is no doubt about it. I think you're going to be uh, making uh, 19 now on your list. Do you, by the way, do you have another book in the works already? Yeah, we have to write two more before uh, they put me in a cemetery. So, uh, <laughs> do, you have, do you know what the topic is or no? Can you no, I can't tease it? say because then somebody will rip it off. All right, we won't. Um, we won't. <laughs> but it's another, it's another confronting book. And it'll be out next September. Well, you are amazing. I This book is awesome. I, I feel like we have all learned so much. Confronting by the presidents, everybody. Confronting the presidents. No spin assessments from Washington to Biden. Uh, and you learn so much about modern times and obviously great history and a lot of things you never knew before from the great Bill O'Reilly. You can get it at BillOReilly.com and wherever you get books because uh, it is everywhere as it should be. Bill, congrats. I love having you on. You got to come back on again soon. It was so great to have you here. Appreciate it, Rita, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure, my friend. Great, great stuff. Thanks so much. And everybody, we'll take calls after the break. one 800 848 it's the Rita Cosby Show. This is the Rita Cosby Show.
So I learned a lot from Bill O'Reilly. That was awesome. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. Well, Donald Trump Sr. now, but maybe Jr. in the future. It'll be interesting to see uh, if he runs. And it'll be interesting to see Bill O'Reilly has 18 books. Maybe when he gets to his 35th book, he'll be doing a book about Donald Trump Jr. But he was saying Donald Trump and Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, That's an interesting. I could see that. Both characters. Uh, even though Donald Trump likes Andrew Jackson, the fighter, as he was describing him. Uh, great stuff and really, really interesting. And uh, also, how about the president who uh, his clothes got blown away at the side after he was swimming? There's some great stories there. I can't wait to check it out. BillOReilly.com. Everybody, when we come back, we'll be taking your calls about Trump saying no more debates and also Many are calling for an investigation of ABC television.